Hey everyone, uh, my name is Darius. I'm founder of Drops Platform and uh, we're building the leverage and liquidity for NFTs. And today in this talk, I would like to talk more about what NFTs are going to bring us, uh, how they can be applied in the DeFi and uh, how we can use existing NFTs to unlock additional value from them. So uh, let's begin. Uh, Right, so let's start with the history of NFTs. Like until recently, the NFTs have been all around about digital art and collectibles. And uh, when hearing the term NFT, well, most people think about digital pieces such as people artworks, CryptoPunks, or limited edition, edition tracks from artists. And this is understandable since a lot of these items have made headlines for selling millions of dollars of each. And in, far, in fact, according to nonfungible.com, the NFT art and collectibles market reached over $300 million of sales volume in May of this year alone. So, and uh, what, what fewer people actually have noticed is that a whole new range of important new use cases for NFT technology is now surfacing. So these include such as proof of action. Uh, for example, Bankless DAO is providing NFTs to attendees of community calls to prove their participation. Another thing is uh, membership and subscriptions. So as an example, it would be music artist Bilal providing access to new music sales exclusively to users that previously own Bilal NFTs. Also, we see identity management solutions like uh, Crucible, where it's possible to tokenize your game profiles into NFTs and then, and then manage metaverse items all from one place. Also, we see more, more interesting applications with uh, ERC20 tokens, which is interest bearing NFTs from charged particles, where NFTs can have custom unlock options or hold interest bearing tokens. And of course, is the DeFi positions from Uniswap V3, which represents liquidity positions. And so far, around $1.8 billion worth of liquidity right now is locked in in Uniswap NFTs. So uh, for all of these purposes, NFTs have, have a common trait that makes them useful. They serve as a very flexible digital certificates and any position or item can benefit from being NFT because it's really easy to transfer its ownership and it's interoperable with blockchain and DeFi systems. And uh, the NFT space is clearly right now evolving from digital art and collectibles and reaching more tangible, non-artistic applications. So let's, uh, the single and one of the most important new class of NFTs is very likely to be something we refer as financial NFTs. On the surface, financial NFTs aren't as visually appealing as digital art and collectibles. However, they're extremely useful and may be easily become the largest part of the NFT sector. So what does financial NFT look like? Well, financial NFT are any NFT tokens representing a unique position of financial value. And this, this likely comes from DeFi but may also expand to traditional financial positions. So it can, it, it, it can represent a claim on liquidity provision. It can be an insurance bond or futures position or a unique basket of tokens with uh, ERC 20s or NFT holding another NFTs. And of course it, it can easily become a tokenized real world asset. So when, uh, uh, so as an example of what's already be, being built out in crypto world, it's year in finance, which is issuing contracts as NFTs, uh, which are underwritten by Nexus Mutual. And also we see Solve Protocol programming investment certificates, uh, which are NFTs designed to create more transparency, transparency on token distribution, like vesting and also, it, it, it creates opportunity to create futures for uh, with NFTs. So an important aspect of all NFTs, of all financial NFTs, is that they have quantifiable and objective value. And as opposed to most objective value of digital collectibles. All right, so 
well, why some why why do financial NFTs need to well why do financial positions need to exist as NFTs? Well, there are a few benefits involved in that. Uh, first of all, it's the so so NFTs allow to create a custom positions. So rather than storing positions in smart contracts, NFTs provide more freedom to create custom insurance, bond contracts, derivatives, options, and pretty much anything you want. And the most important part of this NFTs positions that they can be transferred, sold, and used in different ways. Also, all right, and uh, another, Another benefit and possibility of uh, NFTs is the tokenization of the real world assets. Physical assets are also largely non-fungible and by tokenizing them into NFTs, it, their value can be tracked, ownership can be easily tra transferred and once fractionalized, uh, they can be used with the existing DeFi ecosystem. Also, but most importantly, NFTs can improve the capital efficiency of the DeFi space. According to DeFi Llama, there's over $113 billion worth of liquidity locked in DeFi apps. And ERC20 tokens currently do a decent job at representing these liquidity positions. For example, there are C tokens in Compound, A tokens in AVE, or Y tokens in Year and Finance. However, as soon as these assets become more complex, for example, liquidity mining positions consisting of several underlying tokens, ERC20 no longer can represent it properly. And this is when we'll need to turn to NFTs because NFTs are more, much more versatile and can be used to represent these complex positions. And it creates also a whole new range of NFT money Lego applications, bringing DeFi to a whole new level. And so what else can we do with the NFTs? We know that they are quantifiable, they're useful and have many po possible applications. But when we look at the current sol solutions on the market, well, the answer is not that much because for fungible, uh, for fungible assets like ERC20s, De De DeFi makes it exceptionally easy to earn a return or take out loans against them. Popular protocols like Compound or Yearn have grown hugely popular, allowing users to do this. However, when it comes to NFTs, there isn't still much infrastructure to borrow or earn return on them at all. So this is a problem because it excludes an entire new, new, new class of financial assets, ones that still need to be plugged in into the system. And it's also important to note that financial NFTs aren't just collectibles that owners will be happy with just holding and not utilizing it efficiently. There's, there, are, there are actual hard assets which need to be put to work because just the opportunity cost is too high. So if we have a, currently, there are, there are few minor implementations of the, of the NFTs in the DeFi world, which is a good start. Uh, may, many of these platforms involve fractionalization of NFTs, uh, providing ability to pull NFTs and convert them into ERC20 tokens. So NFTX, NFT20, Uniquely, and Niftex, Niftex all fall in this category to some degree. And uh, these ERC20 tokens then are more, much more compatible with, with existing platforms, such as uh, the centralized exchanges, However, in most cases, they, they, their added utility stops right there. Well, we also see some peer-to-peer -peer, uh, NFT loans model, which enables to borrow against NFT assets in some capacity. Unfortunately, the market and general liquidity for these loans is small and trust-based peer-to-peer models add friction to, the, to this area. So for proper DeFi Legos to be built for NFTs, we need protocols which are trustless and permissionless. And uh, well, in order to achieve, the, uh, achieve this, we need to create an NFT compatible infrastructure where we see uh, that we can see in the DeFi world already. Well, 
this would include things as NFT oracles, well, well, oracles which will reliably value and provide price feeds for NFT assets. For example, UMA optimistic oracle, which is really flexible and is powered by community, is well suitable in this area. Another thing is uh, lending markets. So completely trustless NFT-based lending protocol is required and that will accept NFT assets as collateral. And also we need yield farming aggregators, like think about year in finance, but on NFT, but for NFT assets where owners are able to earn return on their NFTs. So all of these missing pieces will contribute to the new NFT DeFi Legos and NFT friendly protocols that can easily interact with each other to unlock new value. So due to, due to the permissionless nature of dApps, use cases are virtually unlimited, allowing anyone to participate and contribute to the system. So in current ERC20 DeFi platforms, we see a good example with Curve, Yearn, and Alchemix. So Curve came first as an automated market maker for stablecoins, followed closely then by Yearn, which built part of its uh, yield farming on top of the Curve, and Alchemix added yet another building block to this, integrating its upfront lending protocol into Yearn. So like this, this concept of DeFi Legos for NFTs is something that we have been working on at Drops. Like currently we're building some blocks that will plug NFT assets into existing DeFi protocols to allow NFT holders participate in a wider DeFi ecosystem. So our ultimate goal, ultimate goal is to create more leverage and liquidity for NFT assets. And the first building block of this, uh, of this structure is the fractionalization. And uh, in our case, we call it the DNFT. So this is a gateway for NFTs into the DeFi system, which works by converting NFTs into ERC20 tokens. These NFTs are either pulled together or they can be locked individually, allowing users to retain ownership over them. Then ERC20 tokens are minted and issued to the owner. So far, this simple concept ha has been seen in few protocols. However, they all tend to suffer from the same liquidity issues. Well, in simple terms, users can get as much liquidity out of their NFTs as they would like. So to fix this liquidity problem, we created something called uh, margin NFT. And uh, well, margin NFT uh, provides an additional boost to uh, NFT fractionalization, enabling users to, to access extra liquidity if they stake stable coins along with their NFT asset. So in short, it combines NFT and stable coins to create NFT liquidity tokens. So it's NFT liquidity combination that secures its value. Margin NFTs enable users to access up to 100% of their NFT assets value uh, by, yeah, uh, by being able for you, by, uh, by letting user to put down stable coins to reduce the protocol risk. So instead of receiving DNFT tokens, user receives a position NFT that represents pooled assets. And this position NFT then can be used as collateral at Drops Loans protocol to borrow funds, or it can be used at Drops Vaults to yield farm with it. So fractionalization and margin NFTs open the door to loans and yield farming, which will unlock new utility from NFT assets of all kinds. Now, when once this whole infrastructure is up and running, when we have NFT oracles, when we have uh, uh, trustless NFT loans and yield aggregators, well, there will be there will be a large reduction in opportunity cost of holding NFT assets. Like more NFT money Legos will be built, and they will contribute to the to the ecosystem. Also, new opportunities will arrive arise from NFT assets. So uh, new NFTs that are be be being uh, issued by projects will be able to have already existing utility and therefore preserve their value and uh, 
yeah, and, can, and their use can be extended. So if you look at the, uh, at the, at the different uh, asset classes, if you look at the financial entities, so once in infrastructure is built, anyone will be used there, any, anyone will be able to use their NFTs as collateral to create leverage, obtain loans, or earn additional income from yield and liquidity provision. By using DeFi Lego infrastructure, we can create similar system to the curve alchemics uh, and year combination, which enables NFT holders to earn formal yield on their assets. And with the imminent hybridization of DeFi and CeFi, this will, this will ultimately create an ecosystem that is much more accessible and efficient than the traditional financial world has ever seen. Yeah, and of course, uh, financial NFTs aren't the only NFTs that will benefit from such infrastructure. Gaming NFTs will be used to obtain loans and generate yield when they're not being actively used, especially those with large valuations. And NFTs representing virtual land or in-game items could be leveraged to generate a return by borrowing it to other players or renting a land to, uh, to, to allow somebody to build on top of it. And this whole thing can be automated with the aggregation and users will not, will not have to sell the, their items to earn returns on them. So taking one step further, and integrating this into actual gameplay, this could take the concept of play to earn to a whole new level. So, so to recap, uh, there's plenty of cool innovation happening in F with the NFTs right now, and financial NFTs are likely to become one major, well, one one of the major asset classes in the world. Well. Financial NFT assets now are, are really useful and they, they're easier to value than other NFTs, but we also need to think about how to maximize their utility and minimize the opportunity cost of holding them. So by building new tools like NFT oracles, margin NFTs, NFT collateralized loans, and yield farming aggregators, we can prepare for a, we, we, we can prepare a good foundation for this new wave of assets. And we have a bunch, bunch of exciting things under development with the rest, rest of the jobs platform. So feel free to speak to me and follow us on social media if you'd like to find out more. Thank you. All right, so back was, back was asking, are these NFTs stakeable? Uh, so yeah, NFTs can be stakeable. And uh, however, however, to, um, well, not, 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 not any NFT can be stakeable. The NFTs that can be stakeable uh, should be the ones that have underlying liquidity behind them. So usually they should have like ERC20 tokens backing them or they should have a liquidity inside of it. So these more complex NFTs are the ones that uh, have this more intrinsic value. And yeah, then they can be staked, for example, to either to secure a protocol or provide more liquidity and uh, the yield can be obtained from them. Huh, all right. Uh, all right, guys, do you have any more questions about uh, NFTs, how, uh, how farming with NFTs can work? Yeah, so the most interesting sector is, yeah, definitely the financial NFTs. So the ones that have underlying ERC20 tokens under them, or they can have custom expiration uh, options. So as an example, there is this Solve protocol that has NFT and inside it, they have uh, locked in ERC20 tokens and they have custom, custom vesting schedule. So uh, users can create NFT and which can unlock tokens in like one year linear, linearly. And what we can do, for example, to create a solution for user to come with this NFT, and we know that it has, let's say 100, uh, well, 100 uh, li link tokens. And uh, we can give user the value of this NFT upfront because this NFT can be locked in a contract and then can be vested for a long time. 
and uh, underlying tokens can be claimed. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's what it is. Now, oh, what was your adventure with DeFi NFTs? All right. Um, well. Yeah, perhaps uh, one thing I'm being uh, I'm being asked a lot, asked a lot is uh, uh, how how can we create an NFT oracle? Well, well, yeah, NFT oracle to evaluate them because once we solve this problem with oracles, then we have much more much more scalable uh, solutions. So the interesting oracle solution for NFTs is. The mechanism that right now is implemented in the UMA uh, in the UMA protocol. So it works in the following way: that some someone requests a price for the NFT, and then uh, we we have uh, we, we have price providers who will look for the off-chain data and supply and supply the price for the NFT, and the second stage of it is when uh, yeah the, the second stage of it is when uh, th there are th there are the users that can dispute the price and if the price is disputed then we go to the community vote and the community decides whether disputed price is right or whether disputed price was wrong and based on outcome uh, a new price is being uh, sent to the Oracle. Oh, yeah, now I can see the questions. <laughs> so if we stake tokens, we get API on them. What would what we get if we would stake NFT? So when users stake NFT, they can get, uh, well, in, in our case, users would be get, getting fees associated with fractionalizing this NFT. Uh, so, when NFT is fractioned, well, when user sends NFT uh, to the fractionalization pool, there is usually this minting fee. So, this minting fees can be then distributed to the users that stake NFTs. So, that way it can be more sustainable. Well, additionally, there can be incentive with governance token. Right. So, regarding the questions about the uh, about the about the oracles so yeah as i mentioned before uh nfts are quite complex uh to evaluate so they need this community powered oracles where uh, the price can be disputed or approved uh by the community and this is something similar that vitalik buterin proposed recently at uniswap governance forum like for the call of uh, of this decentralized oracle where uh, where we don't where we don't need to rely on chain link or like this uh, stable oracles and we can tolerate uh, some delays in order to receive the data so like this mechanism of uh, oh yeah basically third parties providing uh, uh, price feeds and then having another parties being able to dispute this fee feeds uh, can create quite the centralized uh, solution for oracles so how can we protect future and a few oracles from being exploited yeah this is actually a really good question and uh, this is something yeah this thing should be implement this thing should be implemented in the oracle and there's a there, there's a term in UMA uh, which they call um, cost of cost of ex exploit. Well, anyways, uh, the to secure the oracle prices, we need to make it more expensive for users to exploit the oracle rather than uh, yeah. So we need to create uh, financial financial incentives for users to um, make or for, for the oracle to provide the right price feed and at the same time we need to make it extremely expensive for someone to abuse the oracle and by having these 
yeah, financial incentives, uh, most of the time the oracles could function properly. And uh, in the in the UMA design, if there are like any disputes, so it goes to the community vote, and uh, then the community would decide whether this valuation of the NFT was right or whether it was overvalued or, or not. Well, NFTs itself uh, are quite su a subjective in value, so uh, that's why the solution for it is not that straightforward. Yeah, regarding Polygon, uh, yeah, we we already started working with them, and uh, we're building the infrastructure to basically we are preparing our smart contracts to be deployed there, and probably in like. Uh, in a couple of months, uh, we'll deploy the rest of our platform on Polygon as well. All right, regarding regarding David's David's question about the over collateralization, uh, well, my opinion on on it is that uh, it's better to have over collateralized system by having many by having more tokenized assets. Uh, well, what I mean. Is that in, instead of borrowing uh, and creating funds from uh, from nothing like in traditional finance system, it's better to tokenize as many things as possible so they have lower values, but still they can be used as collateral to borrow funds, and it creates a more stable uh, system. And in case of in case of liquidations, it will not drop as hard, uh, for example, as in traditional finance. Uh, during the crisis, as we saw, so that's uh, uh, that's the that's the approach towards it. So, yeah, yeah. Regarding wax, uh, I think that's something we we're going to explore, or at least provide uh, bridges from the wax to Ethereum, so that those NFTs could be e easily transferred. Yeah, regarding the partnership with uh, Chromia blockchain, uh, yeah, I, I don't have particular opinion about it. Uh, I believe the more diverse uh, ecosystem we have, the the more innovations are going to come in this place. So, um, yeah, it's exciting to see projects working together and using each other each other's technology. All right, it seems we we ran out of questions. All right, so thank you for your questions, guys. It was it was a pleasure to present to you. And uh, yeah, if you want to find out more, you can you can go to our Twitter, drops NFT, and uh, join our Discord groups. And we have plenty of exciting announcements coming in the coming weeks. So yeah, stay tuned and uh, ha have a great conference.